Okay, so as the title says, new camera test. Yeah, it's just a lot of stuff's been going on here. Uh, I have not touched a radio in, well, over a week now, other than to turn on one maybe to listen to it while I'm doing other stuff. Uh, got done whatever I was working on last week, and I don't know when this video will get uploaded, but anyhow, um, and I. Of course, I use a lot of parts. <laughs> I do a lot of repairs and radio restorations. And I tend to buy in bulk. Parts are, for starters, they're a lot cheaper when you buy in bulk from, you know, companies like DigiKey, what all the blue bags are back there. Um, so, you know, I, it's not like I have to order uh, individual components like, a let's say, a 1 microfarad 50 volt electrolytic capacitor very often, maybe once a year, once every year and a half, because... Parts like that, a lot of times, I'll buy 500 or 1,000 of. Uh, you get really good price breaks. Sometimes the parts can be half the price of buying, like, say, 5 or 10 of them, if you buy in large quantities. Now, for... And speaking of radios that are turned on, let me turn that off. Okay, so... Uh, but in any case, got to the point where my normal parts cabinet that I keep my... The electrolytic capacitors I use almost on a daily basis, the one up, trying to look through the viewfinder here, that one there, um, was starting to, to get low on some of the drawers. Now that's just my daily use stock, and then I have large parts cabinets that I keep the overflow in, and then some stuff even too much to fit in some of these, I have an even bigger, deeper drawers. But yeah, it was just, it got time to, it's restocking time, and... <laughs> It turned into a week-long spending spree uh, between parts um, for the electronics course coming up. Uh, there's I've wanted to get an, a real digital video camera, not a cell phone. Because up until this video, um, I've been using a cell phone. Um, so I now have digital video cameras, plural. I uh, got some nice Canon digital video cameras. Now, something I have not received yet, uh, I'm also going to be using a Shure wireless microphone system. I have not received that yet. So the audio that you're hearing right now is actually from the... <laughs> actually, this camera actually has stereo microphones in it. But the problem is they're both in the front, right underneath of the lens of the camera. Um... So I'm not sure how good the audio quality is. It's probably okay. But yeah, I'm going to be getting a, a real professional... Actually, I've already ordered it. It's probably be here tomorrow. But uh, like I say, a sure wireless microphone system. Um, computers was another thing. Uh, I have not owned a tower-style computer in 20... Probably 25 years. Uh, I've used laptops. And they've been fine for what I needed to do. Uh, and honestly, in the last five, or actually probably pushing ten years, I really don't use computers that much at all. Um, I don't do so, I mean, I guess YouTube's kind of social media. I don't use it as social media. I use it as an educational tool. Uh, at least I try to. But um, I don't do social media at all. I don't have a face, face flap, snap nuts account. I don't twinkle... Yeah, any of that crap. I just, I, that's the death of the world, in my opinion, is social media. It's brain rot, causes nothing but anger and dissension among people. So, yeah, I'll, I'll get done with that rant. But, anyhow, uh, but for doing the course, I needed some computing power. Uh, I also needed just bigger screens. Trying to edit videos together, I needed the software I need to use. I want to be able to do picture in picture. Um, so, like, you know, if I need to take a, like, what you're looking at right now, let's say this was a circuit board I'm working on, but I want you to be able to see, you know, the screen or maybe that meter or, you know, that signal generator or the oscilloscope or something, but I've got the camera panned down here. But I want to have a fairly close-up view of maybe the meter movement over there. Well, I will now be able to do the picture-in-picture. -picture. Not that that's anything really that fancy, but... Most of your free software edit or video editing programs don't come with that. Finally found one um, that's reasonably priced and actually does uh, just a phenomenal amount of 
fancy stuff. I mean, like if I was filming somebody running across the field, I can make the ground collapse beneath their feet like a sinkhole. I mean, it just, it's got some really fancy stuff. But I don't need any of that. I needed something just for YouTube. That's the only thing I need to edit, edit, edit videos for is YouTube. And they don't need to be fancy. Um, I'm not action motion here. It's just what's on the bench, but I need to do a couple little things. Might be nice to add some text, you know, and whatnot. And I'm just not familiar with any of that. So did some research and ended up getting uh, Wonder Shares Filmora. Um, and I think it's going to work out perfect. It is, I mean, it has, like I say, has lots of fancy features, but it's very simple to use if you only need to do simple things. Um, so... I think that's perfect for YouTubers, and I may, once I get used to using it, I may do a separate video on that program uh, just to show other YouTubers that, yeah, this might be the perfect YouTube video editing software. Um, but yeah, so I got two new computers. I got a HP All-in-One, basically the biggest, baddest one they make. I um, also got a, a rockin' tower system um, with... God, what's that thing? 80 gig RAM and two terabyte hard drive. Yeah, just just the two computers, no accessories. Just the two computers is over $2,500. And then I had to get all the accessories to go along with it. Because like I say, don't use computer. You know, I've only ever used laptops for Christ the last couple decades. But yeah, I got all of that. Um, tools. There were just a lot of things I've been meaning, because once I got on this spending spree, it was like, man, I, there's just stuff I've been meaning to get for a long time, never get around to it. Just little, And then little things around the bench here. I, yeah, I need to do this one day, and that gets put off for a week and a month, and then it becomes a year. And eventually, it starts to interfere with my efficiency in working on stuff so yeah i've ordered a bunch of new screwdriver sets all, all german made i got a, a wea the, the miniature set um the master miniature set with the big stand um got a new set of german made fellow actually they're over here the nice ergo grip ones again made in germany fellow oh but that came with a nice wall rack which <laughs> I have no wall space. It's all covered in test equipment and parts cabinets. So I actually have that mounted to the front of a desk drawer. But it's right beside me. Very convenient. It actually worked out rather well. But, uh, yeah, it's just, man, it's been... And then my phone <laughs> was another thing. I've been meaning to get a new phone. Because here the other week, all of a sudden, I couldn't do eBay anymore on my phone. Yeah, the horror. Oh my god, that's like the zombie apocalypse, man. I can't do eBay. No, it was still fine on my tablet. I could still do it on my, my laptop computer. But like I say, shoot, I'm lucky if I turn the laptop on once a month. That's just kind of inconvenient. Um, so I was using the tablet, but yeah, it was the phone's so old that eBay has just plain stopped supporting the old Samsung Galaxy S3. I don't know how many years I've had that thing. But you know, I'm very, I take very good care of my phones. Uh, they usually last me three batteries, <laughs> you know, two to three batteries. I'll actually completely kill a battery to where it'll it'll work for like five minutes and shut off to where they're literally just, that's all the charge they'll hold anymore. Um, so yeah, I got a new uh, Samsung Galaxy S7. Now my eBay app works again. Um, and was able to, to get that. It's kind of nice. Uh, and it, that's the problem though technology. I, I honestly, yes, I work on electronics. I use fancy test equipment, but that's the extent of my technology is working on two-way radios. Computers, yeah, not so much. I just don't use that stuff. Uh, you know, phone, yeah, I talk on it, you know, a little bit of stuff. Tablet, I work, you know, even the computer, I order parts. That's about it. I might download a service manual once in a while. I just don't use technology that much. I don't have time for it. It's honestly just a waste of time. Um, you know, watch some videos on YouTube. Yes, I mean that's the. I have a couple channels I subscribe to. You know, Buddy, Peter, Paul, um, Alan, um, the main radio guys, and that's about it. That's my that's my footprint on a computer and the videos, of course, that I upload. But yeah, so I had to just learn all of this. I had to set up two new computers. I also got uh, two 8-terabyte backup hard drives. Um, I got two 1,500-watt UPS battery backup systems. 
Uh, just, and then, of course, with the battery backup systems, they've got computer interface with those because you can hook the computer up to the control. It'll sense when it goes to sleep or shuts off. It'll shut off all the accessories that are attached to the control jacks on that. So, yeah, but I got to learn how to do all of this, you know. And I, of course, when I do something, I don't do it halfway. I just go all in. And yeah, well, yeah, all in was just a I'm technologyed out. I don't know if technologyed is a word, but yeah, I'm technologyed out, man. My brain, if you happen to hear a sizzle or something, yeah, that's not something on fire here. That's just my brain. That's the last few brain cells fizzling away. <laughs> so I'm trying to do something that's calm and relaxing for me. Um, had to order, like I say, lots of parts. It was time to order parts. So I had like a $1,250, uh, actually, I've, the last couple days, placed actually four DigiKey orders. The first one, which has arrived here, was like $1,250, I think. And that was pretty much nothing but electrolytic capacitors and some resistors. That was, well, no, I got maybe 20 in rotary encoders. But yeah, that was it. Just just electrolytic capacitors, just bags and bags and bags. Just you know, a lot of capacitors. And um, actually what uh, showed up, the reason I'm doing this is I got a, uh, not, I don't want to say a new camera mount. Actually, the mount itself is actually an antique. It's almost as old as I am, I guess. Uh, but I got a new swing arm, uh, so it's kind of a mount. Part of it's new, part of it's not. Um, what I had been using, let me move the camera here a little bit, had been, let me get it folded, collapsed up here, was a microscope mount. Okay, so this is what I use for my microscope um, here at the bench. I've got other other microscopes, but this one I use here at this bench because it's on it's on a pivot. It's got a power supply built into it. Um, you know, extends out, swivels around. You know, it's very universal. It's really nice. You did the and the thing is, it's very easy. You just pull the microscope head out of this thing, and I had a clamp thing like sort of lack of better terms, clamped to this that was a cell phone grabby type thing. Actually, I can show you what one looks like. It looks like that contraption right there with the long arm. But I had modified it. What I had done was is I had cut it off so that the flexible part in the middle was only like that long. Because I didn't want that flex. Because this, honestly, as you can see, that's definitely not stable enough to hold a camera. Because I remember I was using a cell phone for my camera. And that's what I use this for, to hold my phone when I'm talking. Um, but yeah, I just took one of these, whacked basically the entire center out of it, it pulled the, the, you know, the chunk out of the one end there, and then actually left a piece about that long and then shoved it back down in to make it really short. But that's actually what I had clamped to this ring here. Um, so I really like this because it's it's flexible. It swings around. You know, I can move it. I mean, you can't see me rotating this thing, but yeah, I just got it's it's so nice. The problem is I now have a real camera that has a quarter inch screw mount on the bottom, and yeah, it's other than coming making up in a, a fancy adapter plate to mount to that head to mount this digital camera to it. Was still, it was kind of yeah, that ain't gonna work so well. So actually, let me just see if I can do this without stopping the video. Let me just unscrew. I know there's going to be a lot of clunky noise with me unscrewing this thing from the mount. Let me just show it to you. So this is what I came up with. So here, this is the original base. Now, the mount is actually a PS... Oh, actually, I saved it. Oh, where did I put it? It doesn't run off already. Hold on. There it is. I know I cut the end of the flap off of the box. It's a Rode. It dawned on me. Well, Rode makes microphone mounts. Maybe I could use one of their microphone mounts for a camera mount. And lo and behold, like I say, I really like that microscope mount. This is the exact same thing. Is that And that mount has to be like late 70s, early 80s vintage, because the microscope that came with that is old, and it's the original microscope to that mount. But, uh, yeah, it, exactly the same. There's no difference other than the head, and then the base, of course, doesn't have a power supply attached to it. It's just the pin that sticks out the bottom. But, yeah, so 
that's the that actual swing arm right there. It's a PSA one Podcaster Studio arm, and it actually comes with two mounts for the bass. Uh, let's see, where are they? So it has a bench clamp style right here. So you know, there's the hole that the peg would go in. You know, down there at the base that it would sit in, clamps to your bench, where you can do a permanent installation. You just drill a 7 8 hole into, into your table or whatever, and then again, the end of that would just fit down in here. Um, now, what I'm probably going to do is, because at times I may want to use two cameras, because I have multiple digital cameras now, video cameras, I may want to put the other one over here somewhere, and that way I can actually have two cameras, or it'll give me the, the flexibility of putting this mount on either side, to the right, you know, the right or the left. But, uh, yeah, so what I came up with here on the head, took a little bit of machine shop <laughs> work to get this all together right. Um, so what this comes with is, is a standard uh, 3 8 inch thread, okay? Because that's your standard for microphones, and actually it comes with a, uh, an adapter then 3 8 to 5 8 depending on what type of microphone you're attaching to this. Well, of course, the bottom of this camera has a quarter inch. So, you know, I could have just turned that down and re-threaded the stud to quarter inch, but yeah, then it's kind of hard to turn and twist the camera around. I need some flexibility, and that was the nice thing about using this style mount. It had a ball on the end, so, you know, I could swivel my phone around. So, what I came up with was <laughs> this old, um, you can see, made in Japan. Yeah, this is back before stuff was made in China. It was made in Japan. But it's a, just a tripod mount is all that, that actually, where is it? That's actually still laying down here as well. This is the old tripod that it came off of. So just screwed on the end there. But the nice thing is, and it's even, look at that, made in, or was Kmart. It was a Kmart brand. See the little K in the little yellow box there? Um, and I think this one belonged to my father. I've actually got a couple of these, but I think this one was actually my father's. But the main thing is there's no plastic here. It's not a cheap piece of junk like most of these tripods are nowadays. The center stud in this is a solid piece of metal. So I was able to just take that out, take it out, stick it in the uh, metal lathe, drill a, a 3 8 inch, where you drill a hole and then tap it for 3 8 inch, which is what this center stud is. Um, the bottom wasn't very flat because it didn't need to be the way it was mounted in that original base. So I just took the carbide bit across the base to flatten it off. And yeah, so now I have a a real camera mount head stuck to a microphone boom. And man, this is this is actually I think will work out really good. Like I say, it gives me great flexibility for rotation. Um, I can, you know, swing it in, back, down, up across the bench. Um, and let me see if I can get this thing reattached here without stopping the video. I really didn't want to have to stop and edit this video together. I just wanted to do a quick update. I don't know how quick this is going to be. What am I up to? 18 minutes already. Good grief. Yeah, you get my mouth running. It can just go all day, can it? <laughs> so, in any case, that's what's up. Um, so, the electronics course, maybe in a week? I don't know. Um, I, I, but it, it's Like I say, the computers... Needing to get stuff together, I've got pre and this is a lot of money. I've I've got in the last week, I've spent I think just two hundred dollars shy of ten grand between parts, computers, peripherals, cameras, microphone systems. Um, yeah, it's just been yeah the I had about what thirteen thousand saved up for a new communications test set. I want to get a brand new. True that they're the, the most modern Roden Schwartz uh, communication communications test set that's made. Yeah, that ain't happening no time soon now because the, the thirteen thousand dollars I had saved up for that, yeah, well I just like I say, I use like ninety eight hundred of that <laughs> out of the business account and it just poof kind of vaporized. But uh, so yeah, I'll have to start saving back up again for that. You know, basically <laughs> get a little bit in there. But uh, so I've got pretty much everything I need for the course now. I can actually, I've got some good video cameras. I've got, you know, nice mount here that's, like I say, I think this is just going to work out fantastic. Um, I'll be able to get started on those videos. My only final problem um, that was kind of turning into a roadblock for me was 
uploading the videos. I live in the middle of nowhere, uh, out in the country, and now download speeds are fine. I can live stream an HD video. That's not a problem. The problem is, if you ever do a speed test on your computer, or if you just look at your internet service provider, what they're telling you, what your their advertised speeds are, your upload speed it is always like like a tenth <laughs> of whatever your download speed is. The problem is these videos can... Some of my videos, especially if they get to be an hour or more long, we're talking like one and a half to close to two gigabyte video file size. It takes a day or more, literally. Like, this video, if it was an hour and something long, I quite literally, you know, since it's on the computer, go to upload it. If I come back tomorrow, this exact same time, there's a really good chance it would still be uploading. It takes that long to upload a video. It's just, oh my god, it's painfully slow. Um, yeah, like I say, it is DSL through the phone company, but the problem is it's through the twisted pair. Uh, now, you know, if I walk out to the end of the driveway, walk a couple hundred yards to the left and cross over into the state of Maryland, yeah, they got fiber optic down there. Yeah, Maryland went fiber optic years ago. Pennsylvania, at least where I'm at here, yeah, not so much. <laughs> so, that's going to be a big problem for me is uploading these videos. These it's electronics course videos. So, I got with the uh, local printer, copier, shipper. They do silk screening t-shirts, pretty much anything graphic arts, anything like that in town, which is actually where I drop off packages when I'm shipping stuff. You know, I print out a shipping label here, but I, they're a FedEx, UPS, Postal Service. They're a drop center for everybody. Um, and I know all the girls in there, woman-owned and all woman employees, but a great group of, great group of people. Um, and I asked Grace, I was like, <laughs> could you upload files for me and how much would it cost? She's like, oh, just, you need a couple of files. They don't charge me a lot of times to do stuff because, you know, if they have a, like a paper shear or they have a problem with some of their equipment, I'll fix it for them. It's one of those, you scratch my back, they scratch my back. You know, so give and take. It's, it's always worked out well. If I need something big, yeah, I'll pay for it. But a lot of times they're like, oh, don't worry about it. And same thing when, you know, goes both ways. But I was like, nah, this isn't going to be like a one-time thing. I mean, like for a couple of years, probably, I'm going to be needing to upload, you know, and by the time this course is done, I definitely will probably have probably a few terabytes worth of video files that are will have been uploaded in a couple-year period for this electronics course. Um, she's like, so she got with the, the owner, and she was like, yeah, well, we'll figure out some reasonable rate, you know, like by time, you know, by the hour, we'll come up with some reasonable figure, and I think that's going to work out fine. They, you know, so I'm going to have to pay to upload the videos. Now, smaller ones like this, I'll do it from here or from home. But yeah, once I get rolling in the course, what I'll do is shoot the videos, edit them together, um, flash them onto a or stick them onto a you know flash or a little thumb drive, and then I can just take the thumb drive in town, hand it to her, she can upload the videos for me. Um, that's another thing I got to do. I got to change my YouTube account to a, uh, I don't think it's called a business or it might be. It's, it's a different kind of YouTube account where I can assign managers, um, but I can limit their access because that's the problem with YouTube is YouTube is your Google account. <laughs> so, you know, they need your username and password. Well, I'm not giving somebody my, even people that I trust, I'm not going to give somebody my username and password that gets to everything that I do on Google and that they own. So if I switch my account over to, I looked it up, I can't remember, like I said, I don't think it was business. It's They've got a special name for it. It's just escaping me at the moment. But if I set switch the account over to that account style, then I can set them up as one of the account managers, but I can restrict their access. They'll have their own username and password. They won't be using mine. I'll actually set them up with their own username and password. and But they'll only have access then to like upload videos to YouTube. So like I said, I think that's going to work out well. So there's just, you know, some of what I've been working on. Um, you know, it's, I got stuff just scattered everywhere. I'm rearranging. Actually, I got one of my radios I need to move over here. You know, I got 
this Yezu, I need want to move it. I got another. Uh, that's just temporarily because I actually had some other stuff here. This radio was actually back over there. It's slowly working its way over to this bench. Um, actually, there's one of the new computers. That's actually the all-in-one, and that's actually a touch screen on that thing. But yeah, it's just a whirlwind here of equipment and parts and. <laughs> but I just had to do it. It just is getting to the point of. I couldn't put off any of this stuff anymore. Parts I have to have, but there was just other stuff. The computers, the cameras, some of the other stuff that I just, I gotta have. And it, ah, it just, like I say, starts to drive you nuts after a while. When you go to, you're like, oh man, I wanted to order that and didn't get around to it. So, um, be look out here very soon. Like I say, I've got pretty much everything I need. As soon as my wireless microphone system shows up, uh, I'll be set. I'll be able to start doing videos for the course. I, and the course, how's that going to work? I do have a website. It's not public yet. I'm still working on some of the pages, but I do have a web address. I'll announce that when that gets launched. But the course itself, um, this is you're going to have to bear with me in the early videos. This is going to be a learning experience for me as well. Um, how I do this course, or actually doing the videos. Um, I mean, granted, I've got 400 and whatever videos on YouTube, but that's not like teaching an entire course. Those are just kind of overviews or repairing a radio or whatever the video's on. But yet, yeah, this is going to be a little bit different doing this electronics course. So the early videos. Yeah, they may be painful to watch, and it this may be kind of clunky. I'm going to need to get my mojo or my groove down <laughs> on how I do these videos, how the course is going to run. You know, it's going to be a learning experience for me. Um, once I get comfortable doing them, I may find better ways of doing things. You know, just how I just writing is a whiteboard going to work, or maybe a computer screen, and like I say, doing the picture-in-picture -picture thing. I'm going to be, you know, using new programs i got to get used to, but once I get my groove down, and, you know, how things are going to go, at some point later, I may reshoot those early videos. Now, if you're taking the course, you won't have to re-watch them. It's just going to be basically me redoing the videos because, yeah, they're just so poorly done. I won't be I won't be able to stand it anymore. Um, now, granted, the, the videos may be fine, but yeah, I just kind of have the feeling that, like anything, the first couple times you do something, you're not that great at it. Um, so yeah, the, the, just teaching. This is going to be a whole new teaching method, and yeah, it's going to be just new. Period. Free education with some internet, um, you know interaction through the forum on the website that I'm going to have. Um, but you're going to be... It's, the course is very dependent on you. It's, you know, there's no cheating. The only person you're going to be cheating is going to be yourself. It's going to be like basic open book type course. So, you know, if you don't watch a video, it's your loss. I'm not losing anything. You know, you're only going to get out of the course what you put into it. But, yeah, so very soon I should be getting videos up. Um, like I say, bear with me on the early ones. It's going to be a little clunky. And it might be a couple videos in until I get the, the, the website published. Because, honestly, the first couple, it's just going to be basically introduction to the course, um, some mathematics. Because electronics is math. There is every, absolutely everything you do in electronics is math. So there is a lot of math. And it can get rather complicated. But we're going to make that simple. As um, long, as long as I can teach you how to use a scientific calculator, don't let the math scare you. Let the calculator do the, do the fancy math for you. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of that. Intr introduction to, you know, powers of 10 exponents using a scientific calculator. Um, matter, atoms, <laughs> that's a lot of your basics. If you, go, if you actually take electronics in school like I did, uh, that's what you start off with. It's just a lot of book learning. And, it's, and that's actually, you, if you really want to understand electronics, you need to know that basic print. You may never really use the atomic theory, but you need to understand what the electron does if you fully want to understand, you know, right here's a perfect example, how an electrolytic capacitor works. If you truly want to understand what's going on inside of this, you need to understand atomic theory, how the electron moves, how it gets stored. That's 
you know, the fundam the true fundamentals of electronics. And if you tr understand those true fundamentals of electronics, the end result is you'll be a better electronics repairman uh, because of that. You'll have a true understanding, you know, in, in your mind, you'll be able to trace through a circuit what exactly the electron is doing inside that circuit. But there you go. Uh, my God, we're at 30 minutes and 4 seconds, so yeah, it's a half hour long already, so let me get the heck out of here. I'll try and get this uploaded at some point, and uh, so course is coming, lots of new fancy equipment. I still have about a day's worth, to <laughs> two days worth of just putting parts away, and uh, I can get back to kind of my normal schedule, half working on the course, half working on customers' radios. Um, yeah, I've got avalanche mountains, or mountains that are about ready to avalanche of radios to work on. But, uh, so, there you go, just a, not a short update, turned out to be a long update.